Hello and welcome back to Caves of Cud. <clears throat> Excuse me. My brain is melting and I'm I'm not well. I'm actually totally fine, but like it's late in the evening and uh, you know sometimes your boy have to go buy a meatball, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Anyway, we're going to we're going to uh explore some forgotten ruins and uh we're going to you know, I never put it in this context before, but these ruins really are like those old, uh, you know, like um, book fairs. Do you ever go to a book fair when you're like eight or twelve or whatever the, may, the case may be? And uh, you're like, yo, I can't wait to buy the new Captain Underpants. And, uh, and then you go and you can't afford it because you're poor um, like me. And... Uh, and yeah, the book fair. What, what a time, right? Do are book fairs still a thing? Anyway, ruins um, in Cud kind of feel like book fairs because they often have a lot of books. But unlike a book fair in real life, you can uh, just kind of take what you want. Um, geez, am I like robbing these ruins? Who owns these ruins? Tell me that. Tell me. Um, I wonder if Caves of Cud is based on some kind of like socialist reality you can just go to any ruin and take the books and yeah they belong to someone but it's not stealing because you know they're it's, it's those books they're partly yours as well probably not probably i think the definition of ruin is like abandoned in some form so in that would that would actually make it belong to nobody nobody belong owns those books there's plenty of people around who sh could be taking those books. You know, they could have taken those books, but they didn't. They didn't take them. Um, so they're yours, you know, first come, first serve. I just got a bunch of reputation with the um, denizens of Ezra. Which is the, pretty cool. Um, Ezra is a pretty good, pretty good place. I don't know if there's much point in getting a uh, reputation with them. Wow, there's certainly a lot of stuff going on here. Do we get any experience for warlords? No. Oh, well, that's a bummer. Are we still lost? So where are we going? Well, we are in fact going to Eid Freehold. Because uh, as it is right now, I mean, there's not much else I can do. I mean, there's plenty of other things I could do. I could definitely explore a lot of places. I could go to that named location that had a bunch of uh, double-headed slug snouts in it. I'm pretty sure I could take them on with 11 DV. I feel like we could. I just got some reputation because I fat fingered the numpad. Hello? Yes? What's up? Blah, 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 blah. Sorry, a goblin is uh, here. It, it. Hello. There's a there's a goblin here, and it, it, they are demanding me uh, that I give them attention. Hold on a second. Did you know that um, kobolds used to be furry? They didn't used to be lizards, as I understand it. They used to be kind of furry creatures. Um, okay, all right. Maybe I'm maybe I'm making that up a little bit. What are you doing? Are you are you staying or are you going? Okay, you're staying. All right. Like, uh, okay, I used to I played this game a long time ago called Dokapon Kingdom. Those uh, who are fans of Dokapon Kingdom. You know, let your voices be heard in the comments. Represent the Dokapong Kingdom. Dokapong Kingdom. Uh, those who who know it, love it. Um, those, or maybe they don't. <laughs> whatever the case may be. Because uh, I'm sure, um, like Mario Party, uh, Dokapong Kingdom can be quite divisive. We are friends to the GNU. Let's see if this GNU is worth befriending. Hated by worms. Uh, loved by antelopes. I don't know if I want to be enemies to worms. That would mean that we are enemies to Kraken. So, I'm just going to go ahead and leave. Anyway, uh, Dokapong Kingdom, if you don't know it, 
it's basically if you took Mario Party, removed all mini games except rock, paper, scissors, and then made it an 80 hour RPG, uh, then you would have something that resembles Dokopan Kingdom. I'm not kidding, by the way. That's a very accurate uh, description of it. It basically all combat takes the form of rock, paper, scissors. You are fighting against your friends, and yes, it is basically a 40 to 80 hour RPG, depending on the case. Uh, there's many, many chapters in it, and um, like it's it's just like strap in, boy, or or girl, or they uh, strap in and get ready for uh, a entire weekend of Dokapon Kingdom of uh, of and it, and it's very anime as well. So maybe one day I'll do uh, I'll play Dokapon Kingdom for a charity event or something. That would be fun. I would do that. That sounds baller. All right, so we're going to eat. F oh, am I lost in the river? Oh no. Not a good place to get lost. Um, we're going to Eid Freehold. I'm hope I'm hoping that I'm welcome there. Um, but basically, we need to regenerate our uh, tongue. And Eid Freehold is a place that we can do this. Actually, we have to stop at Kyakukya. Kyakukya. Um, we could possibly talk to the Ural. No, wait, wait, not the Ural. I was thinking we were in Ezra for some reason. So, all right. Um, going to eat Freehold is kind of a bummer. I'm not a huge fan of, uh, ooh, Naftali Forager. Legendary Naftali Forager. That could be very good. If we could make friends with a Naftali Forager, then that would uh, possibly give us, get us closer to being friends with robots. That's my logic anyway. I know Naftali ro uh, Warriors and the robots are, are pretty close to one another. So I said I saw a nook, and so I must explore this. There it is. We, we got ourselves a nook. Gents, I am uh, I am playing cud right now with with one hand, and whenever you say something like that, someone is bound to ask you, "Well, what are you doing with the other hand?" I mean, I am I have a cat in in my lap, and I am of course uh, giving them the desired attention. I'm sure no one would uh, ask me to cease that activity, uh, and in fact, most people would demand that. Um, you know, pictures of the cat and all kinds of uh, sacrificial bounties, you know. But don't sacrifice the cat. No, that's not what I mean. I mean, like, give us tribute in the form of many pictures of your cat. And uh, you can subscribe to the coffee for that. Uh, a new uh, glorious collection of pictures of my cat inbound soon enough. I'm not kidding, by the way. <laughs> I, uh, some people offer quality content for their uh, coffee subscribers. I offer pictures of my cat. And you know what? Who could say that that isn't also quality content? But anyway, uh, going to the Eid Freehold kind of sucks because um, we have to go through many areas that if we are to get lost in said areas could spell our doom. Um... It truly, truly not, uh, not, uh, does not resonate with joy. You have run out of water. Oh, God. Do I want to stop traveling? No. So, um, yeah, this is, this is bad. I might make it. So long as I don't get lost. I don't want to investigate ruins, no. No, I don't want to investigate ruins. No, I don't want to stop moving. Eat freehold. No, desiccated, please. Um, we could drink some wine. I wonder... Uh, we'll drink some wine. It's disgusting you vomit. What? Why? 
Like, I know we don't have a tongue, but... Huh. Are we gonna die? Two more tiles, come on, two more tiles. One more tile, come on. You absolute scum. Well, we are in Kekuka. Okay, well, we're gonna do the same business again. We're gonna do everything more or less the same. I, I was correct the first time when I said, let's talk to the uh, Ural. And look at that, they've got, they've got uh, many um, things that I want. So let's go ahead and make some trades. First of all, uh, I ought to stop for a second and uh, investigate some of these things. Oh, a hover sled. Nice. Uh, ooh, we have strange tubes, 15 pounds. That's probably a grenade launcher. Mechanical wings. Okay. All right. Interesting. You know what? Let's wear those. We are carrying a nylon body pack. Nylon body pack usually my go-to, but mechanical wings are actually really nice, and they would be insanely valuable in the, our current activity, which is trying to get to eat freehold. Electrified Desert Chris is actually not a terrible find. Let's uh, take the cell out of that. And nano, nano pneumatic jackhammer. I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble that. That uh, pure alloy is actually a pretty valuable find. And I have a pickaxe, so I don't need it. Freezing iron dagger, also not a terrible find. Okay, um, we have some wrist fans. I don't think I'm going to be using these. I might, but um, I think for now I'm going to take the cells out and maybe sell them. No pun intended. There's no pun there, but no pun intended. Hey, you know, you could just say that at the end of every sentence and you would be correct. No pun intended. Um, all right, let's sell the slugs and nunculus and we're gonna buy a cobalt tube a milky tube and I wouldn't mind seeing what the small stone is Unfortunately, I think that is a um, a Recoiler I say unfortunately because now I think it has a chem cell in it um, So we could have bought it for 30 drams before now we're buying it for uh, 100 drams oh, Look at all the Fancy stuff we've got. And we are profiting a little bit of water. And that's all we really needed was a little bit of water. And I'll buy the lead slugs. Okay, so um, what is the small stone? Kyakuka recoiler. That's a new thing. There didn't used to be a Kyakuka recoiler. And I kind of get why there wasn't a Kyakuka recoiler. I also say, try saying Kyakuka more than once, even adjacently. Um, the fact that there is a Kyakuka recoiler is a really big... It, that, that's a dramatic change. I don't think that a lot of people are... That's going to go above a, a few people's heads. The reason, re, the reason it is such a big deal is that is basically cut your... Um, fungal problem in half. Let's let me let me illustrate. Seventy-five percent chance that itchy skin doesn't develop into a fungal infection. So I would recommend if you truly do not like uh, having to deal with fungal infections and the curing of them. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that these that specific name locations such as Kyakuka, um have like static built-in consistent um, recipes, meaning that that recipe will always be 75% chance to remove fungal infection, right? So what I'm saying is that if you want to, um, you know, get ahead of the whole fungal problem a little bit, this is this becoming nook zone has changed quite a bit. Uh, then go to Kyakukya, buy a recoiler, and then as soon as you have a fungal infection, recoil to Kyakukya 
and uh, you know partake in the mushroom beverage. Someone's gonna get annoyed that I just referred to a uh, soup as a beverage. That's a new one. I don't know if I've heard that one too much before. I've heard, uh, you know, cereal is a soup. I haven't heard <laughs> that soup is a beverage. Does that not mean that uh, if we were to agree on this idea that cereal is a soup and soup is a beverage, would that not mean that cereal is a beverage? Let me, let me, uh, okay, I can, I can, I could uh, argue that cereal is in fact a beverage because consider this uh if you were to put boba tea in a bowl how would it really differ from cereal fawns of the meadow i don't think i've ever gotten this one the following is an excerpt from the travel diary of kaylin sanchell who generously donated her leather bound volumes to the monastery of the illustrious heart of chrome may they remain i think this is a i think this is some baylock lore I think this is some Bela lore, and there it is, Bela. And I think this is um, this was written by uh, Kaylin. So I actually kind of want to go through that. I, I was thinking at one point of starting a series where I just read some of the actual lore in Cud. Like, you know, we don't do like I don't do any. Maybe I could set it to wander mode. Oh, that that's a great idea. We do I do wander mode. And it's um, wander and lore. What is happening here? Um, you know, wander mode, just so that we can find books, like specific named books. And then uh, each episode, I just go through some books. And no, none of the randomly generated ones. The yellow books in Cud are um, are like handwritten. They're they're they're. A manually written book, as as uh, the kids would say, they never said this. But yeah, they're they're um, actually that's actual cud lore, and uh, you know, cud is above all else. Um, you know, aside from being a very amazing RPG, also a very well written and fleshed out world, and to um, to partake in in that lore would be. A good idea. It's, it's something, you know, if I'm going to, to pretend that I, I enjoy Cud, and I do, then I, f I think it would be a good idea to enjoy all aspects of it and not just the gameplay ones. Um, let's do control tab. I just want to see, okay, so mechanical wings off. Okay, so am I, I guess I have a chance of uh, falling. There's a there's a a few new flying mechanics as I understand it, um, not real like I haven't covered flying or anything like that, but um, there there are more flying mechanics um, since you know I've ever used flying in Cud and I haven't really used flying all that often, um, but one of the main things that was added to flight is the ability to take off. Even if there are enemies like right next to you, which is really excellent. That's just a that's a that makes them a hundred percent worth it. I'm gonna temporal fugue here. I'm not in any danger, but I just don't want to have to deal with that whole situation. I love the little pistol turret. So um, you know that's pretty cool. Uh, there's some other things too that make. Um, make flying like very worth it. Uh, I guess I'll discover the lair, although this is a really, really dumb idea. Quatravolt glider. A quatravolt. Hmm, see, this is the problem. And oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, goody, goody, good. There's a memory eater. So, um, yeah, this is why you don't stop. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn our mechanical wings on. Then I'm going to go ahead and illustrate for us why mechanical wings are such a good thing for us right now. Because I, yeah, I, I anticipated getting lost a couple times. And uh, I figured 
it would be a good idea to, um, well, I say it's a good idea. I think that I figured the mechanical wings would assist us in, oh, why did I do that? Oh, I just like a hundred percent, like, I didn't know that was a hole. I thought it was a door. Oh, this is, this is bad. I am now underground in the Palladium Reef. Um, I've never been underground in the Palladium Reef. I have no idea. Oh, well. Why? Oh, my, my mouse is on screen. Um, those, those are, those are, uh, impossible. Hmm, we might be dying now. Uh, let's... Temporal Fugue. And Discharge. Wait, am I, am I out? No, I'm not. Um, Discharge. Problem with this is that my clones are very likely going to, um, shoot at me. Can I fly out of this, do you think? Can I proselytize my neighbor? Can I proselytize without a tongue? Yeah, I forgot about that. I am probably gonna die here. Badly wounded. I'm, I, I, there's a small chance I could survive. Level 18. <gasps> we escape. Oh, oh, thank God. So we did survive and I think we've killed just about all of those things. Yeah, we did. Those things are worth quite a bit of XP. Um, Bloody jumble of tongues. You butcher a sappy, salty, bloody jumble of tongues into a tongue twist. As I understand it, there's some... there. So this is a new ingredient, which I've never gotten before. Tongue twist. What, is it, what does it do for us? Triad of tongues are twined together in a fibrous twist. They gleam with a coat of saliva. But what kind of... Uh, oh, I guess it's a food right now. So if I want to find out what it does... I would need to preserve it into fermented tongue. So what does fermented tongue do? Adds tongue-based effects to cooked meals. Yes, you heard that right. Tongue-based effects. Well, I survived. Uh, you know, the smart thing would be if I... Oh, I guess I, I have all my... My temporal fugue is back. Um, you hear a crunch and then the junk dollar to the southeast explodes. Uh, I think don't step on the... On those dollars. I'm assuming these things are bad as well. Junk dollar. Yep. This is not a good place to be because I can't see anything. I can't. Oh, no. You're held in place by this far dim hatchling's webbed foot. Uh, this, uh, I keep saying we might be dead here, but we might not be dead. Let's go ahead and, uh, attempt escape with our temporal, or fugue, uh, temporal fugue. Where, where are our friends? They seem to be gone. Okay, they are still here. They, they were just not visible to me. This is such a bad place because I can't see anything. We are getting pretty good XP. Oh, that was a grenade. Well, fortunately it's normalcy gas. We are technically at... Oh, oh no! 
the wits fart him eld to the southeast burrows a channel through the psychic ether and begins to sunder your mind uh, and they are doing insane damage well that's for sure the end because i don't think i can kill this thing in time and i cannot get out of here All right. Okay. Okay, bud. And by bud, I mean cud. All right. So we have our mechanical wings. <clears throat> I I need to go to. <laughs> I need to go to eat freehold. I that was my fault. Hundred percent my fault. I. Uh, I played the gambit and I lost. Look at how look at how easy that journey is if you just don't stop ever. Like jeez Louise, you know? All right, so Eid Freehold, the newest newest member of the crew. Um this is still a fairly new village in the grand scheme of things to Cud. And it uh has a major benefit. It used to be back in the day if you had lost a limb or your tongue, uh, you could simply um, grow it back either by by basically resting in a bed uh, at Great Gate. But Great Gate has been nerfed, as has the bed, the, the regenerative bed. And uh, in its place, we have Eat Freehold. And Eat Freehold is a very interesting place, and it's got itself a, a regenerative chamber that we can take advantage of. And I don't think that there's any cost to doing so. Uh, we will definitely want to uh, buy a recoiler here, too. I forgot about this thing. What is this thing? Many eyes. Mmm. And apparently there are some holes here as well. Um, okay, so let's... I think the chamber is over here. I don't know why we're so slow right now. Like, the game itself is slow. Uh, no, that doesn't look like it. I I'll try, but... Is this a plant? It is, in fact, a plant. Okay, oh, here we go. Regenerative chamber. Um, Alright, so should be in here. Strange furniture. Uh, drink charge. No, we don't want to do that. I, I have to examine it. This is going to risk uh, endangering myself. But um, we succeeded. Strange furniture with um, homogenized con convalescence in there. And... Uh, we don't want to... I guess we have to examine it f uh, further. This is a regeneration tank. Um, poor look, attack. Enter. There we go. <clears throat> uh, enclosed in a regeneration tank. I'm just going to wait in there for that. You are cured of glot rot. Your tongue regrows. And hey, apparently I did not have the achievement for... Recovering from Glot Rot. So, hey, we have officially gotten our first achievement in this series. Isn't that exciting? I'm pretty I'm pretty happy about that. Apparently, I've, ne I've never succeeded in um, recovering from, <laughs> from Glot Rot. Not completely, anyway. There was that one series that uh, ended in spiraling failure um, because I got Glot Rot. There's something about uh, Eat Freehold that's slowing the, the game down for me. I'm not sure why. Uh, we're, uh, while we're here, going to try and buy a recoiler as well as um, look for, you know, nice trinkets. And hey, look at that. Flawless Crystal Coronet. Um, do we have a thousand drams is the question. Probably not, but we do have some stuff worth saving or uh, selling. How much is the fermented uh, tongue? Oh, we don't get the fermented tongue. That was in a alternate timeline. Um, we have two cybernetic credit wedges. We could sell the masterwork scoped carbine. Um, 
We're kind of getting there. Oh, I think we could do it, actually. I think we can do it. Just barely. We need to sell something else. Oh, easy peasy. There's a hover sled here I can sell. Um, I like the hover sled, but I there are other things I like more in the floating spot. Um, would it be worth keeping my cybernetics credit wedge? I'm going to say no. But is there anything else we could buy? I do need to save some money so I can buy a... Uh, a recoiler. I, I'm pretty sure um, they do sell recoilers here now. It used to be you couldn't buy a recoiler for Eat Freehold, but I'm pretty sure you can buy one now. Um, finding one is going to be tricky, though. Uh, you know what? Before I buy that small platinum tube, which is almost certainly a, ne a Eater's Nectar injector, um, I am going to try and find the... Uh, recoiler. I know someone sells it, but it, it's going to require me to uh, look. <laughs> um, shouldn't take too long. We are running into the end of the episode here, though. Is it you? Do you sell the recoiler? Small stone. Oh my goodness, that is an expensive small stone. But... Almost certainly that is what I seek. And so I would like to have that. Um, we could sell a nylon body pack. Kind of don't want to, though. Uh, let's sell our spine fruit jam, just for starters. Uh, b -b 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 what, what can we sell? I don't know if I can sell anything, really. Worm jerky? No. Sun-dried bananas? No, not really. I could sell some star apple jam. Sure, 40 servings of star apple jam. Have at it, my friend. We'll sell a lot of fermented yuck wheat. Um... This is, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, I guess we could sell some books. Someone out there is like, of course you could sell some books. Look how many books you have. Yeah, I know. But like, you understand that they are valuable, right? I could just be content with this. No, I need, I need to, I need, I think at least 100 drams. 63 drams. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll be content with that. So, is this, in fact, a recoiler? Yes, it is. Unfortunately, it came with a chem cell, so that means we paid we paid a lot for that chem cell. I'm gonna remove the chem cell for now. Um, we don't really have any money left, so I can't be buying that platinum tube, which is a real shame because I'm pretty sure it is a Eater's Nectar injector. Disassemble that plastic tree. Do, how much uh, we have 90 skill points we have 12 mutation points can we put anything in temporal fugue nope um i wouldn't mind if these gave me an explanation as to why i can't upgrade it i think we're not we're not uh, held back by our ego by any stretch i think we're probably limited by our level right now we are level 17 and temporal fugue is 9 um but I, yeah, even I like I'm not I'm struggling to know ex exactly why we can't upgrade it more. But anyway, that I think is going to do it for this episode. It's been a very eventful episode, and we have acquired our first achievement. Um, you know, I think what I'll do um, as long as I'm I we're we're, we're doubling down on weird. Uh, I think I'll I'll uh, leave it on a cliffhanger and say on the next episode. I'm going to jump inside this clam. So, uh, look forward to that. That is, a, of course, an achievement, and it's worth getting. Although, probably we shouldn't be going for this this early. I say this early, but, like, we should be going for uh, the, the clam hopping achievement maybe when I'm tough enough to take on 
the perils of the Palladium Reef. As we've seen, it can get quite spicy. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.